Have you ever had a miscommunication with a resident that resulted in a negative outcome? You are not alone. Emotional intelligence will help you improve your communication. In this video, we will define emotional intelligence. We will look at a non-emotional intelligent nurse and an emotional intelligent nurse in patient care. Emotional intelligence is the ability to use a mental skill to generate positive outcomes. This mental skill is a four-step process. 1. The ability to be aware and conscious of your and others' emotions. 2. The ability to use emotions to facilitate thinking. 3. The ability to understand the emotions. And 4. The ability to manage the emotions to generate positive outcomes. You ready for report? I'm ready when you're ready. I had the hardest patient last night. Uh, I think he's the neediest patient ever. I knew I should have called out today. Okay, give me your report. Okay. The resident, he's here for three weeks of rehab. And he has a history of OCD, CVA, right sided weakness. What is the patient needs this time? Who knows? The call bell's been ringing all day. I know, right? I mean, I've given him a bath, made his bed. I don't know what else he could possibly need. I'll call his room phone to see what he needs. My money is on pain medication. There you go. Thank you. Hmm. I don't. He's not picking up. I guess I'll go see what he needs. How can I help you? Uh, where have you been? I have fallen. I need help. Just give me one second, I'll get some help. Nurse. Nurse. We told you not to get up without assistance. The resident, he's here for three weeks of rehab, and he has a history of OCD, CVA, right sided weakness. If I had an obsessive compulsive disorder and was not able to organize my care, I would be in distress if things were not done to my expectations or organized in a certain way. Hey, would you come to me to check on patient room too? It's called us to be going off a lot this morning. Something might be wrong. Of course, yes. Yeah. 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 I need my walker to be placed on my left side next to uh, the head of the bed, okay? I'm sorry your walker was displaced, but thank you for calling so you don't fall. We can help you get out of bed. Do you mind if one of us stand in here and stand by you in case you need assistance? If you want to, you can do it. That's up to you. Why do you think he constantly broke his cobble today? He has obsessive compulsive disorder, so he wants his walker to be placed in the same exact location and position every time. Oh, okay. And it's causing him great concerns because staff members are using his equipment and not returning it to the original location. And he's not able to do it himself because of his stroke and that has left his right side, you know, a lot weaker. Now I know mm -hmm. it's going to be more helpful. lost control of his daily routine and is constantly using his call bell because he's anxious. So he will be here for the next three weeks so we'll need to let the staff know that he's very particular about his care because of his obsessive compulsive disorder and he is not able to physically do it himself. So that way the staff won't take it personally if he corrects them or calls them multiple times to do to do it until it's correct. So what are we going to do with the call bell situation? We will establish a plan of care uh, where we check on him every two hours. Uh, we will ask him what else we can help him with after finishing his care. We will make sure that his room and supplies are organized to his liking 
And by doing these things, we are promoting the healing process and eliminating the conflict. So he will start to do some of this, some of his care as he gets stronger with rehabilitation. Therefore, the use of the call bell will gradually decrease. God, how are you able to figure this out so fast? Oh, because I'm using emotional intelligence. 